See the blood that flows in our body is not just one cell. It is made up of red blood cell, white blood cell, platelets flowing in a liquid or a fluid called blood plasma. So, what is this called? This is connective tissue. The main characteristics of connective tissue is as the very name suggests it connects, connects all parts of the body. In the case of epithelial tissue, the cells were tightly packed with no intercellular space. But in the case of connective tissue, cells are loosely arranged in matrix. So, in the case of blood and lymph, what we find is blood plasma is the matrix and the cells are loosely arranged. So, blood is a connective tissue. Example, blood. Another example is that of bone. You know there are bones in our body and together they make the skeleton. The bones provide framework to the body. Bone sport body. Can you imagine our body without skeleton? It will be like a lump, we would not be standing erect. So, it is able to support the body. Then what about our vital organs? Brain is inside the cranium, heart and lungs inside the rib cage and spinal cord inside the vertebral column. What does that mean? They protect vital organs. Many times you must have heard that while playing or any accident the bones fractured. What does that mean? That bones are brittle, characteristics are they are brittle and they are hard. Why are they hard? Because their matrix is made up of compounds of calcium and phosphorus. Calcium and phosphorus compounds in the matrix. That is why it is so important that in our diet we should take enough of calcium, especially women after menopause because they need calcium for their bones, otherwise they suffer from a disease osteoporosis. Even children suffer from a disease called rickets because of lack of vitamin D. So, where is calcium here? You see it is the vitamin D which helps in the absorption of calcium and vitamin D can be manufactured by in our body when it is exposed to sunlight. So, that is why the children are exposed to sunlight. So, calcium and phosphorus is very important for our bones and also for our teeth. You know teeth is are the hardest tissue of our body. So, you see the matrix is made up like this and what about the cells? The bone cells are arranged in a ring. Arranged in a ring and many of the bones have a cavity in the center which is called bone marrow. The bones are also inflexible. That means they cannot be bent, but we bend. How do we bend? We can bend them only at the joints. The point where two bones meet are called joints, but when if they will meet and they will rub against each other, there will be lot of friction. So, how does our body protect us against that friction? There is another kind of connective tissue and that is called cartilage. Cartilage is flexible, it can be bent as in the case of ears. You know ears can be folded, but they have 
cartilage and not the bones. The matrix is made up of protein and sugar. It is strong. It does not break easily, but it is elastic. In the case of cartilage, the cells are just the cartilage cells are just scattered in the matrix. They are not arranged in any specific shape. Now, why did I start talking about cartilage? Not only cartilage is there in nose and ears, it is also present between the joints and it prevents the friction. So, together bone and cartilage provide us with the framework. In the case of fishes, there are some fishes which are made up of only cartilage and they are called cartilaginous fishes. Now, how are the two bones joined together? Are they just lying one above the other? There has to be connection also and that connection is provided by ligaments. Ligaments join bone to bone. They also have less matrix. They are elastic and limited strength. They have limited strength. Now, how are bones covered? By muscles. So, are, are the muscles just lying above the bones? No, even they have to be connected. It is not like as if cotton is lying above the bone. So, how are they connected? They are connected by tendons. Tendons join muscle to bone. They are not elastic like ligaments, they are fibrous. Non elastic, but they are very strong. You must have heard that many times, especially sportsmen, they rupture their ligaments because ligaments are not so strong, though they are elastic. But if we really stretch ourselves too much, like while say playing cricket or football, they really stretch their limbs. So, at that time, the ligament can break. Now, okay, all this connective tissue is there, there are organs and these organs between the organs and the skin, there is a kind of packing material. When you are on a transfer and you are packing your material, what do you do? You put lot of hay or you put thermocol balls, why? So, that they can absorb shock and the real thing will not break. So, our real thing in this package is the organs. So, around the organs in the extracellular space, there is another kind of connective tissue and that is called areolar connective tissue. It is between the organs and the skin. So, it is a kind of packing material. It is made up of collagen, yellow and white fibers. Now, last but not the least, our body does not have only muscles and skin, there is also fat. Everybody has some kind of fat and it is in the form of layer below the skin. And in what form are the fat molecules? Adipose. So, the connective tissue which has fat molecules is called adipose tissue. So, these are the different type of connective tissue which help in connecting and they also help to protect us in this way that they are there. Because like in the case of blood WBC protect us, 
in the case of areolar tissue they package our organs. So, the main function of connective tissue is to connect body parts and because they connect blood and lymph are also able to transport material.